Hi there, I'm Black Bright. Welcome to my channel. If it's the first time you're passing through, thank you for allowing me to enter your space and you're welcome into mine. If you like my topics, please subscribe, share and um, click up the thumbs up button. Um, and I really wanted to talk, I was watching the um, pre-election, you know, in the House of Commons and I was listening to Boris challenge um, Jeremy Corbyn. Now this was last week but I was only listening to it today and you know when they say the devil's in the detail well me I kind of pick up on all things and I probably take it way out of proportion um, but it doesn't take away the fact that it's kind of sat not so easily on me. So I decided that I would do a video on it. I was writing down my notes, so I'm going to have to speak from my notes because sometimes I feel as though when I talk just ad libbing, I miss out important information. So if you don't mind the lack of eye contact, I'll try to kind of look up at you every now and then. But yeah, I think it's important that I do get it right, as right as possible, even though they're just my thoughts. But what happens is, is that I think of something and then it goes. And I find that all the time. You know, I have these brilliant ideas sometimes, sometimes not so brilliant. And if I don't write them down, they're gone. And once I've written them down, they're gone. So sometimes I can recall them, sometimes I can't. This is one of those that I can't recall, so I'm going to read it. Okay? So, anyway. Um, so Boris was talking about the NHS is being 35, is going to have the 35.5 billion investment. And he was saying it is coming from Brexit dividends, new money and other sources. Now, I honed in on other sources. Why? Because I'm a sceptic. Now, the new money, I was thinking, where's that new money coming from? Because, you know, there's rumours about uh, being sold out to the United States, the NHS being sold out to the United States. You know, I, I th well... Boris Johnson is definitely not gullible. But what I think has happened or is happening is that we've had, well, they reckon number one that we've got 20 point something billion from the dividend, the, what do you call it, the Brexit dividends, which apparently, um, according to Telegraph or one of these other papers, I'll put the link in it underneath, is a myth. It doesn't exist. So, Presuming that they're paying forward, that they're borrowing against what they don't have for the NHS and they're plugging in all this money in the NHS and assuming the other sources or new money is coming from Trump or America, or wherever it's coming from, because new money means that they've, um, it's not inherited, it's what they've actually earned. And the only person I can think about who's got money like that is somebody like Trump. Now, just supposing Trump has said, quite um, oblivious to the sensitivities of the Conservative Party, look, the NHS is a really good um, idea. I'm willing to invest in the organisation and I'm willing to invest £10.5 but it must uh, it must make a profit. It must be a worthwhile investment. I haven't got money to be throwing all over the place. So they've been, so just supposing that it's not really a, well. It is a deal, but not the deal that um, people are thinking in the sense that they're making it look like Boris and um, Trump have got together and like they're doing something behind our backs and they're going to sell off the NHS. I don't think it's that way. I think that Trump is rescuing the NHS because it, they reckon it needs, it needs so much money um, for it to continue to exist the way it is. Now, just supposing that new money or other sources, in quotes, is coming from Trump, that would give Trump the, um, the right to have a say when things go tits up, if they go tits up. Now, what I'm thinking is, is that um, Boris also mentioned wealth creation. His party supports 
wealth creation in response to Corbyn saying that he sold out to the NHS to Donald Trump. The problem with that is that the wealth created goes to the individual or persons who created it, i.e. the rich. It doesn't trickle down to the masses. So if you if you think about um, somebody like Trump, who's an economist, who's not going to just put money in and not see it um, grow, then you can understand how he factors into this. And I have got a funny feeling that we are going to be beholden to Trump or America for rescuing us. Because nobody's mentioning where those other sources are coming from. That's kind of, you know, hidden underneath the table. But I reckon it's something like that. And I think that they probably trust Trump. They don't think, oh, he's going to do anything untoward. But you wait until whatever happens after Brexit or whatever. I've got a funny feeling that they something's going to go down with regard to the NHS, and it's because we will not be able to maintain it. If they're using Brexit dividends that don't really exist, which is not really ours, they're going to be in debt. And so that they're going to be, it's a bit like, you know, with China, and they're doing this Belt and Road Initiative, and they've, they've invested billions in Asia and billions in Africa. Now, what, what's happening there is that they've invested in the infrastructure, and, and so Africa and Asia, they're beholden to China. So if they can't repay that loan, and assuming the, it's a loan we've got from, NH, from um, America, this is all hypothetical, it's not fact, it's just my opinion, but supposing, um, so in the situation with China and Asia, if they don't pay it back, they actually get that part of the country or whatever they've invested in, the roads, the infrastructure or whatever. So similarly, Trump, if he's invested in the NHS and he, we, we as the UK cannot um, reimburse or cannot give back what he's given us, assuming that would give him the right to try, do whatever he needs with the NHS to get back his money. You see, and then when you think about um, the Home Office, now Boris Johnson is talking about he's going to reduce um, the visa price for immigrants, doctors and nurses under this Australian point system. And the Home Office is not supporting that. They're kind of dragging their feet with that. So if you think to yourself, OK, if the Home Office is in on it as well, and the Home Office is dragging their feet about getting um, immigrant um, nurses and doctors in to help build up and restructure the NHS, they're, and if they're not allowed to come in, the, and the NHS is going to crash, isn't it? It's going to fall to its knees. And who comes to the rescue on a white horse? So... I I don't know. I just think that I smell a rat as usual. I don't know if there is a rat there to be smelt, but I smell it anyway. So anyway, thirty four billion investment plus one point five in the NHS. Um, what else? I've already said that. There's a claim that. 20 billion awarded to NHS is from the Brexit dividend. But according to the Independent, I'm going to put the link in below, there is no dividend. So, yep. And what else? How do we know we're going to, how do we know we haven't got a loan from Trump pending the outcome of Brexit to keep us afloat? After all, it is in his interest because that is possible. They could go, they could have gone over there quite innocently, in quote, or quite naively. I I, they're not naive people by any stretch of the imagination, but you don't know how things are worded. But they could, you know, NHS is big for this um, for this um, election. It's big. It's massive. And so if um, um, Boris thinks he's going to lose the vote because of the NHS, he would do anything to safeguard it. And it might be a short 
term in his mind he might think okay i'm going to try and keep the nhs afloat i'm going to put money in it i'm going to do this to make it look as though with me in power the nhs will be kept and it will be afloat but it's at the expense of being beholden to a third party that is not in the uk and who does not have the uk's interest at heart they have their pocket at heart so um, Boris was talking about um, 14 new hospitals apparently according to Corbyn it's dropped down to six um, and I also heard I don't know where that was though that they're bringing over um, US health professionals to work in the hospitals at the moment I don't know how much how many billions they're paying towards private consultants I don't know what nationality they are in the NHS but it's a lot of money so Boris is making sure we get the funding we need standing up for our economy and wealth creators and I think that's regardless of where we get it from so yes he is trying to stand up for our economy but the thing is I think you know they have this um, debt um a debt men mentality Ment when you're in so much debt it's supposed to be good for the economy or something i don't know how, quite how they work that out but you know it's okay to borrow billions apparently it's okay i mean when you think about trump he, he that's how he survives on debt and you know he lets other people pay it back but it's a similar situation but you have to know what you're doing you have to know what you're doing it with so I don't think Boris has gone out there categorically and said, OK, I'm going to do a deal with Trump to sell, uh, sell off the NHS. But I do think that Trump has offered him a lifeline and the price of that lifeline will be felt later. That's what I think. And then, of course, they're going to blame it on the Labour Party. Keep dragging up the bloody past. I mean, please give us a break. Um... There's somebody called Rand, I don't know who that is, but he. I put down this quote, man has to sustain his life by his own effort. The man who has no right to the product of his effort has no means to sustain his life. The man who produces while others dispose of his product is a slave. And that had to do with wealth creation. I'm going to have to think on that because it's very deep. Yeah, more or less it's saying that, you know, you have to do things on your own effort. You can't rely on anybody. If you're relying on somebody, it's not, it's not yours. And, um, yeah, it's not yours. It can be taken away at any time, basically. A man uses his mind and his existing property, i.e. previously created wealth, to bring new wealth into existence. So by that... And Trump being an economist, I translate that to mean that Trump sees the NHS will bring new wealth into existence. And Boris not realising that to be the state of play. Just me thinking out loud, as usual. It's not fact. It's just my hypothesis. I'm just playing around with ideas based on what I heard. OK, Home Office decried for blocking NHS scheme to use more trainee doctors from overseas. I've mentioned that. The Home Office is blocking plans all already agreed by the Health Secretary and the NHS bosses to let more overseas doctors come into Britain to help tackle the health services staff shortages. And like I said, that could all be a ploy to make the NHS crash. They don't have enough doctors. And then, you know, you have to ask yourself, you know, would these doctors really want to be here? I mean, some of the patients don't even want doctors of colour. So I don't know. I'm doing another video about um, the half, he's, he's, he's um, offering this um, half price visa um, for doctors and nurses from abroad, but that's for another day. Um, it has refused to allow, this is the Home Office, the Home Office has refused to allow the planned expansion of the Medical Training Initiative, in brackets NTI, to go ahead despite its inclusion in the government-backed NHS long-term plan. The Medical Training Initiative 
is a national scheme designed to allow a small number of doctors to enter the UK from overseas for a maximum of 24 months so that they can benefit from training and development in the NHS services before returning to their home countries. Now, I don't know why the Home Office is dragging their feet over that. They're probably dragging their feet waiting for a result for Brexit. But at the same token, the NHS has to continue to function. Under the MTI, as many as 1,000 trainee doctors a year from outside the EU are able to come to the UK for up to two years to learn from consultants and then return to their home country. Medics who spend time working in the NHS under the scheme help hospitals fill medical voters. The Health Secretary, Matt Hancock, his department and NHS England want to see the number of arrivals under the MTI significantly expanded. Health Education England, the NHS Medical Training Agency and the, Acad uh, the, Acad the Academy of Medical Royal Colleges, which represents the UK's 220,000 doctors professionally, want it trebled to 3,000. However, the Home Office appears to be hampering its progress. And my guess is that if they don't allow immigrant staff to come in and work for the NHS, the NHS will not be able to function. It will fall to its knees, be at the mercy of America, allowing Trump to come in to rescue on his white horse. And offer us a paid service. I think it's a setup. The Home Office has been accused of making the NHS doctor shortage worse by threatening to deport or denying re-entry into Britain to overseas doctors working in the health service who have made minor errors in their application for a new tier two work visa. It has since changed its stance after, it, after its decisions provoked an outcry. When you think about that, why would they even bother to come, honestly? So, your comments as usual. Bye-bye.